Golf Central. Brought to you by Titleist. The race to Dubai coming to a close this week as Sergio Garcia, Justin Rose, and Tommy Fleetwood battle it out in the DP World Tour Championship. And on the PGA Tour 2017, wrapping up in Georgia in the RSM Classic. And on the LPGA, $1 million, count them, on the line in Naples as the winner in the race to the CME Globe will be crowned this weekend. Welcome into Golf Central, Chantel McCabe, joined by Steve Burkowski. Does it have to end here? We want more. We always want more, <laughs> and a lot on the line. A big week in golf all around the world, and we get right to it as it is ladies first this evening. For the fifth consecutive year, Tiburon Golf Club in Naples, Florida, will host the LPGA season-ending event. The Greg Norman design course will put an exclamation point on the LPGA schedule for 2017 as this week marks the 33rd and final official tournament of the year. Lexi Thompson begins the week at the top of the standings in the season long race to the CME Globe. Lexi along with the rest of the top five know with a victory this week in South Florida they will automatically win the race to the CME Globe but it has been a tumultuous year for Thompson both on and off the golf course. For more on the fourth ranked player in the world we go down to Naples Florida and say good evening to Lisa Cornwell. Yeah, and Burko, it's a position that she's actually really comfortable in. Lexi Thompson doesn't just enter this week at the top of the race to the CME Globe standings. It's a spot she's been in for most of the year. She chases her very first season ending honor in the Globe, and it's $1 million bonus. You did mention this being a tumultuous year for Lexi, and it certainly has been. Who could forget the rules controversy back in April and the a and inspiration that cost her her second major title, and then a short time later, her mother Judy being diagnosed with uterine cancer. The best news there though Judy is now cancer free. Lexi says because of everything she's been through so far this season, she's really happy to be here in Naples this week, focused fully on golf, not only everything she's hoping to accomplish this week, uh, but looking ahead. I think it's something we don't really think about as players because we just try to go out there and win every time we tee it up. It's not like I tee it up in the first tournament at the Bahamas. Okay, I want player of the year this year. Um, you know, the drive is crazy. So um, I, I just worked really hard in the offseason. I just came out and I just I wanted to win. I wanted to win tournaments, but honestly, just to improve on my golf game. That's my number one goal to be in the Hall of Fame. So to be able to accomplish that and maybe get a point towards that uh, means the world to me. I just have to focus on playing my game and playing well this week. It's definitely been in the back of my mind because that is the number one goal of mine. But that probably started uh, maybe when I was 15. Probably when I first turned professional, <laughs> yeah, um, that was always a goal of mine. As for the player who beat Lexi Thompson in a playoff of the ANA Inspiration, it's been quite the season for So Yun Yu, ascending to number one in the Rolex World Rankings for the first time in her career. It's a spot that she held for 19 straight weeks before losing it a few weeks back. Interestingly enough, that's also the timeline when she started dealing with a right shoulder injury. She says even though she's not 100% just yet, she's more determined and focused than ever to get back to number one and staying there. Being a number one was really um, awesome experience, and of course, when I heard, you know, I'm not going to be number one anymore. I, of course, that was not like greatest news I've heard, but. Um, I think uh, since I've become a number one, I haven't won any tournament in the LPGA Tour, so I don't think I always feel like I'm no longer deserved for the number one spot. So that's definitely my goal. I really want to get back to that position. When I was being number one, I was not really satisfied with my result. So when I come back to number one, I want to be stronger and I want to win more tournaments. Obviously, so young chasing that number one spot in the Rolex rankings, but chasing a whole lot more here this week as we welcome in GolfChannel.com senior writer Randall Mel. How important has this week become for the ladies as this is the fourth year for the race to the CME Globe? Yeah, Lisa, I asked so young you how important this event was, and she said that it feels like a major championship, that it's one of the highlights of the year. And you could make the argument, Lisa, that there is more pressure here than there is in a major because there are so many big prizes and awards at stake, multiple prizes. There's the player of the year, the Vera Trophy, the million dollar uh, jackpot, um, the money winning title. So 
all of that together adds to the pressure. And you could argue that there's more history to be made here. There's a Hall of Fame point for the Vera Trophy, and there's a Hall of Fame point there for the Rolex Player of the Year. And how about Sun Yung Park? She's already wrapped up Rookie of the Year. She's chasing Player of the Year. Could match Nancy Lopez as the only player who did it in 1978 to win both honors in the same season. That's something we'll definitely keep our eyes on in the week ahead, Burko. Lisa Randall, thanks so much. Plenty of drama, plenty of storylines that will play out this week in Naples. And that Rolex Player of the Year, one of the awards still up for grabs. So young Yu, Shen Shen Feng, the new number one player in the world, certainly in the mix. Lisa alluded to Sung Yung Park already clinching the Rolex Rookie of the Year honors. And then Lexi Thompson in at number four. A lot still to play out in Florida this week, starting on Thursday. She himself. That's going to be fun to watch. And let's give the guys some love. The last PGA to our event of the 2017 calendar year in Seattle this week for the RSM Classic. Players will be playing both the Plantation Course and the Seaside Course. It was just announced the resort has some pretty major changes for the facility and the Plantation Course on the way, scheduled to be completed over the next couple of years. Let's check them out. The Lodge at Sea Island enhancement plans include $25 million investment that's going to contain six new cottages, a total overhaul of the Performance Center, some work done in the pool and the pool house, the putting course, and renovation for the plantation course itself, a Davis and Mark Love design. But for more on the plans and Davis Love's role in the process, our Rex Hoggard has a scoop in St. Simons Island. Thank you, Chantel. Now, of all those major makeovers they're talking about here at Sea Island is a complete redesign of the adjacent plantation course, and that'll be overseen by Davis Love III and his brother Mark. I had an opportunity today to talk to Davis about what his vision is for that course. We have a lot of a lot of members here and guests that we want to keep happy first off and and make the golf course a little friendlier, more playable for them, um, make it look more like it's been here for 100 years um, and, um, you know, make it playable and, and challenging for the expert players, which one one week a year we'll have the tour here. So it's a lot of different constituencies we have to keep happy. But first off, the members and the guests. And then um, we, we want to make, make it look like uh, it's a lot of fun, but also interesting and challenging. And there is another St. Simons Island resident in the field this week. As a matter of fact, it's the PGA Tour's most recent winner, Patton Kazire, won on Sunday in Mexico. He flew home on the charter. There was some mechanical problems. Didn't get in until very late on Monday. As a matter of fact, when he teed off for his program round on Monday, he didn't even hit any balls. When I talked to him today, he said it's been a busy few days, but an enjoyable few days. It's been great. Uh, everybody's just been high-fiving and hugging and uh, a lot of text messages, a lot of phone calls. Uh, I've got so many people to, you know, to thank that, you know, everybody's put a lot of work into this. It's not just me and uh, I'm excited to share it with them. Patton is making his four start this week at the event and he's missed the cut in his last two starts. No St. Simons resident has ever won the RSM Classic. Chantel? Back to you. Talk about a whirlwind for him. Other notable names in the field include the host, Davis Love III, of course, and his son Drew, Matt Kuchers in the house, and the 2017 NCAA individual champion, Braden Thornberry, also Brant Snedeker's first event back from injury since the Travelers. And don't forget, coverage right here on Golf Channel at Thursday on 1 p.m. What a 2017 it has been for John Rahm. We'll tell you what award he took home earlier today in Dubai. And speaking of Dubai, they had a little fun on the European tour. Highlights from the Hero Challenger coming your way. Plus, we have plenty more debate on the format of the Charles Schwab Cup Championship. Should the format change or not? We'll find out on Alternate Shot as Golf Central continues. Golf Central is brought to you by the Volky Design SM6 Wedges, Progressive Design, Precision Performance, Grip Confidence, Grip Golf Pride.